cool. All right. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is going to be my first video in a series where I am going to document my progression as a tank in Shadowlands Season 4. Uh, my warrior just got Keystone Master in Season 4, and I am now, I'd say, completely brand new to tanking. This is something I've had very, very little experience with. It. I've played the game for many years, but never really gotten serious into tanking. So, as I have started this new path of WoW, I've decided to create like a video series where I can document my my learning curve throughout it. So, um, this is plus 11 lower Karazhan. Not going crazy. We got a Resto Druid, uh, Destruction Lock. Uh, I just grabbed the wrong affix from the, or the wrong buff. I meant to grab haste from him, but I grabbed crit. I'm used to playing my warrior. Something to kind of keep in mind that I was thinking of as I was doing these pulls is, uh, you know, we had Sanguine last week. We had Quaking the week before. We have no real like ground affixes, which is feeling fantastic um, as I tank this dungeon because of the, you know, previous two, uh, two affixes the last two weeks. But something to keep in mind that I kind of messed up, I didn't really think about when I was tanking, is uh, is the bolstering affix. Um, I learned my lesson, and I didn't do it this dungeon. But with the bolstering affix, you're not really going to want to pull large packs. You know, you're used to kind of doing that. You're used to pulling these super large packs and having your AO, uh, AOE DPS just fucking burn them down. But with that bolstering affix, you know, every time a mob dies, it's going to buff all the mobs around it. So if you're pulling these large packs with that bolstering affix, you're going to have some freaking gnarly ads to deal with at the end of it. So even though you're tempted to do these super large pulls because, like, like yo, I got no sanguine, I got no quaking, I can, I can pull all these mo- No. Bolstering, still, I think the easiest way to run these dungeons, these higher keys, or just any Mythic Plus, when you have this bolstering affix active, don't even, um, just, just press W, you know? Just pull the mobs as they're kind of layered out. You know, you can kind of leave it up to uh, your discretion if you think your if your group can handle more. But the safest route I've noticed with this bolstering affix is just you know seeing what I'm doing here. I'm I'm going in and like you know maybe on a previous week when there was no bolstering, I would have pulled that pack. Let me go back. Where, where was I? Maybe I would have pulled this pack with that pack as well. But um. Because of bolstering, you know, all four of those dudes would have buffed all three of these guys and it just would have been really, really hard. So, with bolstering, I think the easiest thing here to do is just to press W, pull one group at a time, you know. You're going to go a little bit slower, maybe, but, and, uh, you know, maybe this is something I'll figure out more as I kind of progress and I can kind of figure out, like, more of like what mobs are more scary if they're bolstered versus what mobs aren't and this is just a learning curve for me now it really stinks because at the beginning of this dungeon when i talked to the broker i accidentally grabbed crit because i've been used to playing my arms warrior i meant to grab haste so i'm not getting the most benefit out of all of these dreadlord kills as i could be but it is what it is so this is the third week of opera. We got uh, the like the Wicked Witch of the West and the East this week, as opposed to the Romeo and Juliet. And then last week was all the uh, like the kitchen appliances, right? This boss is honestly not bad, but the only thing that seems to be wiping a lot of groups is like the one-shot mechanic that she has in place. She acts very similar to Zymox in the other side. Uh, no, Zymox is, uh, is Sepulcher. I'm losing my mind. He's, um, similar model. He's one of the, um, one of those dudes that looks like from Xerath Mortis. His name isn't Zymox, but basically he's a boss on the other side where he does that bomb and you need to take that portal to, like, jump up into the air and 
time the explosion so that when the explosion goes off, you're not in line of sight, you're in the air. Exact same kind of uh, mechanic here in play with, uh, what is it, you know, the Galandre and Elfra, Elfiera, whatever, however the hell you say these people's names. Same, same, same thing. You know, so she's putting, you can see here, she's putting these purple tornadoes on the ground, right? Boom, boom, boom. She, uh, which one is it? Galandre, right here, she's going to teleport into the middle of the room and start casting, um, right there, Magic, Magic Magnificent is what she is casting. So what you have to do is you need to jump into these purple tornadoes. And so she's about halfway through it. Now would be probably a good time for me to go into that tornado, which I think I'm about to do. I do. So I jump up in there. Boom, the explosion goes off. Now my druid roulette i don't know where he is oh he's down there on the ground he may i don't know if he either didn't go in at all into the purple tornado and just took the full brunt damage of the of the explosion or he went up too late or too early um, but he took a lot of damage our lock took a lot of damage from that um a hundred percent on a higher key that is an instant one shot it might as well be a one shot now but you know no, he says he's dead. All right, so he, he died. I think I pick him up actually. Now that I'm looking back at this, Locke is alive. Yeah, so the the druid completely missed it. I bring the druid back up. Um, and that is what I'm finding with this first opera event, because I've now ran this slower Karazhan three times this week. So three times on this specific boss, and that is the only thing that's causing issues is that bomb explosion so as a tank i'm basically just kind of you know you know spreading damage i'm the, the tank the, the bosses share health so as a dps player you don't really have to worry about which one you just damage them see the lock died that time and that goes back to what i was saying with this boss it's super easy but people are just not you know you know we it's new this week. This is actually the first time we've done this fight since Legion because, you know, the way the offer event cycles through. This is the first time we've done this fight since Legion, so people just don't know it. we got to learn it again. Um, but once... Uh, it's it's actually super simple. You know, once Galandre, right here, this you know little human mage, teleports to the middle of the room, starts casting that spell, once she's about halfway through a cast, just walk into the the purple portal you're about to see i'm gonna do it now i jump up it explodes my health is fine um i'll pop an anti-magic shell just to kind of help mitigate some of that damage this is a heavy heavy magic damage fight and those tend to feel overtuned i've noticed any dungeon that has a lot of magic damage is going to feel a lot more difficult to deal with so that's why bleeding blood dk kind of comes in clutch here you know I, i'm playing with three ranged I'm playing with three ranged classes, so as opposed to dropping anti-magic zone on myself, I'm going to drop it on where they're all kind of congregated, because I got anti-magic shell for myself. Uh, looks like I decided to leave the lock dead for the rest of the fight, mostly because I have no more charges of my... Uh, of my raised dead, of my battle rest, but I probably would have left him dead anyway, just to kind of shave those charges for a future fight. Or in case the druid died. And you can see here, this druid is fucking oom. This druid is hella, hella out of mana. And I think that is down to two main reasons when I'm looking back at this fight. I think one, it's uh, unnecessary damage from like missing the, you know, tornado boop. You know, getting hit by that bomb that you should totally at this you know, it's 100% avoidable. You know, is if you just get into one of those tornadoes halfway through her cast, you'll be completely fine. And what I have found, like that was the main reason that DPS were struggling uh, in my previous run of this, is they would double up. Two DPS, you know, you have a DPS here, DPS here, and then they would both go for the same tornado. And it's obviously only gonna launch one person. So what I told them, and I think was a good practice going forward, um, especially if you're ranged, you know, you're not going to be on top of the boss. A good practice to go forward with is stand next to the tornado that you are planning to utilize. 
when she does that mechanic. Stand next to that tornado. That way, when push comes to shove, and it's now time to jump into that tornado, you already know which tornado you're going to jump into. So there's no conflict of two DPS trying to go into the same one. You already claimed yours like 30 seconds ago. So if that's, you know, if everybody kind of takes that practice, obviously it's not going to be perfect. You know, some melee are going to have to kind of dance around with it. But, you know, I had three ranged in this mythic. So there's no reason why I feel like they should have been getting hit by that. Um, but there is a reason. It's because it's new. We haven't done this since Legion. People are learning it still. You just got to be patient with that fact as well. Um, so yeah, I'll leave the lock dead. Uh, oh yeah, so being oom um, i think healer resumed because people were getting hit by that um and then she had to play hella catch up because i had to battle res her once i battle res her she had to play catch up and use a lot of expensive healing spells to get everybody back up while she was gone second reason i think is ad management i can definitely as a tank do a better job with managing cooldowns on um gorfine's grasp which brings all the mobs to a, a located uh central area and a bomb limb which does the same thing just a little bit slower if i had better cooldown management on those two things and i had better ad control that may have helped have the ads be oh, my camera wigging the fuck out that's weird uh that may have had a better job in getting those ads burned down faster because they were doing a lot of damage that might have contributed to our healer being oom but we end up killing this fucking boss not the cleanest thing in the world but going back it's the first time we've done this so we had planned uh earlier in the dungeon we were gonna do the death skip uh the death skip is you can clear a couple mobs in this next room usually you pull them back into the stage where you have a lot more room to play with they have spells like final curtain when they die and poetry slam that is a pain in the ass Again, not as much because we have three ranged, but normally those are really annoying spells to deal with. But you go around the corner, you have that tiny little room, and then you have the flashlight mobs later. It's a pain in the ass. So usually what the norm is that I've noticed is people will take a couple mobs here, they'll fight them on the stage, and then they will purposely die. So that the entire party gets brought back to the beginning of the dungeon and then goes straight to Morose. And they have found that the time penalty you suffer from just having five deaths is worth it to instead dealing with those flashlight mobs, those other pulls. Now unfortunately, you can see it, unfortunately the game decided to bug out. This is a known bug and another reason why people decided to do the death skip is uh, I think this shaman's chain lightning. You can see those mobs right now. All those singers underneath all got pulled by the chain lightning they are underneath the stage so they're gonna run through they're gonna pull the mobs in that room with like the other actors they're gonna pull it is a bug happened feck indeed so this is not the end of the world yeah so this is what can possibly happen and another reason why the death skip happens because this can possibly occur because for some reason the mobs underneath the stage can sometimes get pulled and then they take everybody on their way over to us. Now, again, this is not a huge deal. We were planning on doing the death skip anyways. So basically the only thing that this kind of hurt was I had to change my pathing a little bit later in the dungeon because I had wanted to get more people in that next room. But because of that bug, I wasn't really able to get that. So we move on we act as if the death skip had just occurred so now we're heading over to morose um, and then we're gonna work on clearing trash out for him now honestly in regards to uh, to kind of all the pulls inside of this room prior to morose there's really there's really nothing too crazy you know um, you know Occasionally, some of the DPS may get hit with uh, a debuff that you're seeing right now. Where do I pause this? Yeah. Go back here. I don't know what the key bind is for pause on this. Might be P. I don't know. Enter? I don't know. 
but occasionally DPS will get afflicted by this, these, uh, these debuffs here. You just fucking separate them. Not, not huge. Like this, this room prior to Morose is, is honestly pretty easy to take care of. It's not too bad. Um, again, if I didn't have bolstering active, I may, I may take those mobs on the other side with me. But because we have bolstering, I don't really want to buff those guys as well. So that's kind of my thought on why I just took it. Going back to what I was saying earlier, when you have a bolstering affix, it may be easier to just press W and just take the packs as they're laid out. And, you know, as I get more experience as a tank and I can figure out what mobs are scarier with bolstering than others, then I might get more comfortable with doubling up on packs, but until then, just pressing W. Fucking Elemental Shaman is absolutely pumping in DPS. So, that is the last pack going for us. Dungeons. Now it's time to trap. Now, something I didn't notice until I was in here, and this is just a, um, speaking on my experience as a more recently, I guess you could say quote unquote hardcore, even though it's not, but I, I'm taking Mythic Plus more serious. But something I didn't realize until I actually got in here, and I'll pause it right now. Last week, there were two melee and two spellcaster ads, right? Well, look what we got here. We got Barry Buck, Millstipe, Darius, and Von Lindy. All right, Von Lindy. All right, so Darius will throw out little whirlwind axes. There was a second, there used to be last week, there were two melee and two ranged adds, and one of them did like a Colossus smash, you know, frontal cone, massive, you know, one shot mechanic thing. He's not in here. He's not in here this week. Uh, and so I think similar to the way the opera event will cycle through each week on what the play of the week is. You know, I might be wrong on this, and if, if anybody watching, you know, has better answers, you can go ahead and, you know, leave a comment saying, no, hey, Tim, you're a fucking idiot. It's because of this. But from my understanding, these guys will cycle through every week the same way that the opera event does. So that kind of threw me off a little bit because normally the guy with the frontal cone is who we would pull first, but I was like, whatever, we'll just, we'll just pull the other melee guy first. Um... Not really sure why, but for some reason, uh, we were only able to have two of the ghost traps, and the third ghost trap wouldn't come out, so we had to rely on a hunter trap, which is not ideal, but we made it work. Honestly, this fight was kind of messy, but our healer was actually insane and kept us all alive throughout the messiness. You'll see uh, the last half of this fight, we actually get two adds at once, which normally is a death sentence but our healer was just insane so i'm pulling him there comes darius right now and i'm kind of keeping them grouped together just to kind of have like a little bit of cleave going on here i'm kind of staying my place something i've i've found as a tank it's better to not chase your targets you already have aggro on them don't chase them you're going to make the fight more chaotic and messy just stay your ground if they run away to go hit a random player, just, they'll come back to you. You got aggro, they'll come back. Now you see here, I pulled that ad. You can see, I went and pulled this ad myself. Um, I have three ranged, so I easily could have asked any of the three other ranged players to be like, hey, can you guys pull the next fucking ad for me? Um, can you pull the next ad for me once the first ad dies? That's definitely something I could have them do, but I am pugging, so if there is something I can do as a tank, I might as well do it. If, it, if, like, if I can do it and it's not going to impede my run in any way, then I'm going to do it. Now, here is where things got hella messy. Let's go back real quick. And I think I know why. And I think this is actually on me. So, we're gonna go back. Here's Millstipe dead, right? Now, she had eight seconds. So, honestly, 
either way, we would have gotten both these ads. But here is where I think I caused a little bit of a mess up. And luckily, we had a healer that could recover this. So Morose, you know, he's at 78% health. The whole point of this fight is you want to get the ads down first. That's why Morose, you know, this fight has been going on at this point for a minute and he's still at 78% health because he's not the primary target. You don't want to do damage to Morose. If Morose gets to 60% health, those guys that we trapped at the beginning of the fight, they're all breaking out and that's pretty much an insta wipe. So you're taking care of the ads first, then you're going to Morose. Um, but you see here, Barry Buck had eight seconds left on a freezing trap. Normally, the three that we CC would all be those co would all be the ghost traps, which I believe are permanent. I believe those are permanent permanent traps. I could be wrong, but those are permanent traps until either broken or until Morose hits 60%. Now she had eight seconds left on her trap. That's why I decided to hit her. But for some reason, you'll watch the moment I break her out of her trap. Vol Von Lindy gets out of the trap as well. Even though I didn't do damage to Von Lindy, and even though Morose is at 78% health. Boom. I hit Barry Buck. And Von Lindy comes out. Nobody else hit her. Nobody else hit Von Lindy. Nobody threw. I didn't see any chain. I didn't see any spell effects. I believe it's because I broke Barry Buck out and uh, she wasn't in a ghost trap, it triggered Von Lindy to come out as well. And normally this is a death sentence. Normally having two of these ads out at a time, they, they buff each other, they do insane damage. Um, it's usually a death sentence, but you know, shout out to Roulette, dude. This rest of fucking Druid was popping off. So you'll see, we'll play this out. I try to get him grouped up as, as much as I can. The important thing with these spellcasters in the Morose fight is interrupts, 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 interrupts. Anytime you can interrupt the spell of either, of any of the spellcasting ads, that is a freaking must because just the damage that they are pumping out. So luckily I have anti-magic zone cooldowns, which I don't know why I'm not using right now. I'm a bad tank. Yep, not a single anti-magic zone. I have anti-magic shell on myself. I'm playing pretty shellfish. Shellfish. Okay. Alright, so now, now it's easy mode. Easy mode for us, not easy mode for the healer. The healer is still dealing with these Garot debuffs, which are just absolutely disgusting. But for the rest of us, it's easy. You know, the ads are done. Now we just DPS Morose down. The fact that we survived that is pretty impressive and a complete shout out to the healer, which as you can see, it cost him. He's fucking oom. He's so oom, it's not even, not even funny. I will say, this is probably the hardest boss of all of Lower Kara. And you get him down, this is the point where you can take a breath. The hardest part is now behind you. Now it's just getting a good pathing to the final two bosses. Um, so at this part, I was kind of confused. Yeah, the healer is saying the dot is horrible. It 100%. I'm glad I was not healing this fight. So I was at this point, I was a little confused. I wasn't sure which pathing I wanted to take. I was thinking to myself, do I want to go up this way and then right? Um, but and then I saw my, my reasoning is I was like, we only got fucking 23%. Even though that way may have been faster um in regards to getting to a toonsman i decided look we're only at 23 percent mobs i'm gonna go in the side way which will enable us to uh clear some of these ads in this room right here there's a second story with more ads and then it brings you to the lower floor that has that little circular area around a toonsman it's more ads but we needed them we didn't have as many uh percentage as I wanted. Now this was a little scary. I think I'm not sure what, how it happened but uh, the other pack got pulled. That pack had a Dreadlord and because of bolstering I was a little nervous about it but the healer has already proved himself. This would be insane. So we, we go through this. Now I think that last pull that we did 
gave me a little bit more confidence in regards to my healer's capability in dealing with some like bolstered mobs. So I do think I'd take, cause like, I would consider some of these kind of like half, like half packs. You now they're in groups of three instead of like groups of five or six. So because these are in groups of three, I think there's a few pulls I do on the way to Huntsman that are actually two groups of three, which now that I know that my healer was capable of doing that, which to be fair, as a tank, I should have figured that out way sooner. But, you know, at the same time, not really, because at this point, think about what we've done. We've, we've cleared some trash on the way to on the way to the opera event and then we had that bug and then we just did regular pulls and those pulls prior to morose are actually big packs so again maybe not oh i don't remember if i said it at the beginning of this dungeon but we do not time this dungeon at all and the whole purpose of this video is for a couple reasons one i'm trying to document my path or my learning path as a new tank in season four you know and kind of showcase uh showcase both the good and the bad because i feel like sometimes the best part of learning is you know if you're always watching you know on youtube like hey plus 24 mythic plus time to run and you're watching you know these players do some pretty incredible you know, Mythic Plus runs that are just executed flawlessly and you're in a group of five people who are all on Discord and, you know, you have every poll and everything, like, micro-calculated to, you know, optimize this dungeon to the most insane degree. Watching those is cool and you can definitely learn... Okay, this is unfortunate. I think, uh, yeah, this is, un this is hella. This is hella unfortunate. I'm pretty sure you go back here. Chain lightning, I think. The shaman's chain. What? What pulled these guys? You see, what happened is these guys on the other side of the wall got pulled. Not sure what hits them. That is stupid. My blood plague hit them. That is stupid. You see that? I, I used blood boil. Right. Because I'm fighting these guys. I used blood boil. Come on, Blizzard. There's a fucking wall there, dude. <clears throat> okay. So that this is my this wipe is is 100% my fault. But is it? Who would have thunk that me using my blood boil? on these pack of three. I'm fighting them here, I'm standing here. You have these guys on the other side of the wall, right? I'm standing here. And I use blood boil and it hits the mobs over here. Like, watch this again real quick. I'm standing here. I'm about to use blood boil and then these mobs get pulled. Boom. It pulls them. They run through, on their way and coming over, they pull these mobs over here. And see, the shaman thought it was him. But yeah, the shaman thought that was his fault, but now we know it's your boys, but that's that's stupid I that that that's one of those things where um, this is the first iteration um, where older dungeons are being brought back for the mythic plus which I'm 100% a huge fan of this is re I mean this is honestly what has like rekindled my like desire to want to do tanking but stuff like that is just frustrating so in the future maybe you pull them away you know you can't think logically you know, a wall is not going to stop things, apparently. Um, yeah, so a little bit of a, a hiccup there. That obviously is not going to help. And kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, 
we obviously do not time this mythic plus um, but you know I'm uploading it because I want to document my path as I get better at tanking and you know fingers crossed six or you know a couple of videos from now I'll be uploading my commentary on my you know you know me tanking a plus 18 or something that would be fantastic I would love that um, but as of right now, this is my commentary of a lower Karazam plus 11 of a failed timer. So, but the second reason I think that this is a good video to upload is you learn through mistakes as well. So seeing things go wrong, like that previous pull where, you know, you accidentally pull people through a wall, like if that never happened you know i'm never gonna learn from it i now know that you know these walls are you know you, they got aggro range via through the wall and the damaging abilities can hit through the wall so play smart obviously you know that's something i gotta take into effect or take into thought as i go and do this again on a higher key you know maybe i pull the mobs back up up onto the stairs to avoid hitting them on the other side of the wall and that goes into why I'm making this video. I think just as, as important it is to watch a Mythic Plus run of a perfectly executed, perfectly planned out, you know, plus 20, you know, Mechagon Junkyard run. I think it is also just as beneficial to upload a commentary of a new tank learning and, you know, dissecting these fights and watching the failures that I'm going through, you know, because you can learn through your own mistakes, but you can also learn through the mistakes of others. And uh, not entirely sure if anybody is actually going to, you know, watch this. And if this video has found you, I do hope that you do actually take something out of this and you learn something for it. But even if that doesn't happen and no one is ended up, you know gaining anything from this at least I'm gonna gain something from this I, I know I am gonna learn by watching this back and reflecting over this and seeing you know what went right and what went wrong now I will say looking back at this I think there's three core reasons why we didn't time this key one we we haven't seen it yet but by the end of this dungeon I think we've had three major wipes we had the one that happened about five minutes ago uh, in that hallway where that guy got pulled through the wall. Uh, and then later when we were approaching Maiden, we had two pretty big wipes where Elemental Shaman's Chain Lightning got a little wonky and pulled more than we wanted. So three wipes, three major wipes, that doesn't, that doesn't help with trying to time. The second reason why I didn't think we timed is I had a little bit of a, um, just lack of confidence in regards to what I can and can't pull in regards to the bolstering. So maybe we went a little slow with pulls. The third reason, dude, this Destro Locks DPS is really low. <laughs> I mean, I've been, I didn't really realize it at, during the dungeon because I was kind of pretty focused on what I was doing, but that Destro Locks DPS is very low. We have the Shaman with 13K, we got me with seven, we got the Marksmanship with five, and our Destro is at 2K. It's not right. It's not okay. Nope, OP sub 2k now. So anyways, this fight, um, there's like some major mechanics to deal with this. One mortal, but a lot of, like, so there's some major mechanics to deal with this fight, but a lot of them I felt like I was able to cheese because of the fact that one, it's a plus 11, and two, that we had three ranged DPS. So, I was somewhat able to cheese the shared suffering ability. You can go back here, we'll take a look at this. He's about to cast it. Shared suffering, it's about to come up here. Right here, he's casting it now. Shared suffering is one of those mechanics where you usually want to have your party not that you don't have to have your whole party but you want to have your party soaking that 
and distributing the damage amongst other players. That way, not just me as the tank is taking the full force of that. Because this is a plus 11, I can get away with taking the full force of that attack on just me. On higher keys, I would probably have to have some other people soak it with me. Or maybe, you know, pop some defensives prior to that happening. But because it's a plus 11, I just ate it. The other thing is, uh, you'll see he casts these mortal strikes. Right now he's casting it. Oh, well, he was going to. Um, but he casts mortal strike, which is a frontal cone. And if you have DPS players that are melee, that's something you gotta kinda factor in because if they get hit by that on a higher key, they're gonna get fucked up. And the more important reason is it puts a debuff on them where getting hit by it, I think, reduces your total health by 50%. It's pretty shitty. So, as a tank, um, my main thing is doing my best to always, and this is just common tank rule, but doing my best to keep the, the boss pointed away from the party. Um, easier said than done sometimes, because this is a fight where you're moving around a lot. You know, you got the midnight trying to fucking charge forward. You have, uh, you got him doing his, uh, mortal strike and shared suffering, but. And then the third mechanic on this fight is not really, it's more on the healer. They're looking at getting the right debuff off. If you can help out your healer, if you see that you have a big purpley ghost, you know, coming out of your body, help the healer out like I did earlier. You can see that I said, I think I, I saw that the, the, the ghost was on me. I may, I may, yeah, on me. You can see that I had that ghost coming out of my body. If you can help the healer out and you see it, you can type on me or there's a weak aura that you can insta, uh, weak aura add on that you can download that will pretty much auto, auto tell the healer that you have the curse on yourself. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. We just popped heroism. This should be the last time we have to deal with the Huntsman off of his horse. So we're just going to burn him down and then swap to Midnight. Clean it up. Honestly, that was actually a pretty clean fight, you know. Those can definitely, I see like the single, like the major points of failure for on Huntsman where you can die is melee DPS getting hit by his frontal cone mortal strike and just dying or the second major point of failure on that fight would be the healer messing up the debuff uh, that he gets put on and possibly cleansing the wrong person or not cleansing anybody at all now these packs all the way up into uh, the maiden super duper easy and looking back at this I wonder if I could have pulled a little bigger uh, in, an, in an attempt to possibly make time. But they're dying so fast, it probably wouldn't have helped. It may have just hurt us more because of the bolstering. And uh, the sad part is, I think we actually still, if. Uh, Later on, we're gonna go. We're gonna clear this pack, and then we're gonna go upstairs. We may have actually still made time, uh, but we had two wipes back to back. Um, not the shaman's fault, but the chain lightning that he used pulled some extra people. It kind of acted. A, his chain lightning just acted buggy, and it pulled some extra mobs. So. Even though, you know, earlier I was talking about the three reasons why I think we didn't make time. Reason number one was uh, the, the three major wipes we had. Reason number two, the um, lack of DPS from uh, our, our fucking Destro lock. Reason number three was uh, my lack of confidence on what pulls could be grouped up and what couldn't. Even though we had those three reasons, you can see we're still like... We could have timed this. I still think we could have timed this. But, you'll see here, I clear this group, 
clear this group right and we end up just getting absolutely and utterly decimated by this next pull no not this pull I pull these guys yeah I pull these guys and then let's see I think No, this actually ends up being fine. It's this next pull, and I I think this was a mistake on my part as well. I was like, okay, I want to, this, this was stupid, but m my thought was I wanted to get some extra percentage, and I wanted to get this Dreadlord for the little bit of an extra buff. So I decided to pull this guy, and just got deleted. Absolutely fucking deleted. And I think that was a combination of uh, the bolstering not necessarily being um, completely gone from the previous pack. And that some of these dudes just did insane damage. And that's going to be on me for learning what mobs are okay to deal with and whatnot. So that sucked. That just was big poo poo caca and that was 100% my fault. Yeah, I did not think that would happen. And this was super unlucky because the druid actually lived. You can see this. The druid actually lived. You know, we wipe right here. Druid survived. He was going to mass res us. Boom, he walked right into the sleepy thing by the dreadlord and this pack came and got him. And that's something else that's really annoying. Is uh, you can't see a lot of the, uh, the ground effects because they clip underneath the rugs inside of Karazhan. Again, it's just one of those things where this is the first time that Blizzard has taken old dungeons and you know brought them back into life for their current Mythic Plus pool. So of course there's going to be some things that just don't work out perfectly. One of them being the you know ground effects clipping. Now what's unfortunate here is I was like, okay, we're really, really short on time, but it's still doable, right? Six minutes, I mean, we, you, it's not great, but we, we still had a possibility. But then I think the Shaman's Chain Lightning acted buggy as shit, because I wanted to pull just that group. And the Chain Lightning pulls them all. And I don't know what it is about this pack. I have no idea what it is about this pack. I think for future runs, I'm just going to say fuck that pack. I'm not pulling it. That pack, for some reason, does a shit ton of damage. Looking back at it, might be the Shadow Rejuvenation ability that's doing massive AoE damage, but I mean, let's go back here. They all get pulled. We're doing fine. Oh. That was an explosive orb that killed everybody. All right. So this pack would have been doable. I mean, it's it still looks like it's a hard pull, but honestly what killed us was the orbs. We just didn't kill the orb and then it exploded and murdered everybody, so. It is what it is, and I think with that death, that is what killed the key. I mean, the key was already struggling, and by no means was this like a, you know, a great run. This was still a learning curve for myself, but any hopes of possibly timing just got deleted right there. No big deal. All right, so last week was Sanguine. I probably would have taken these packs and brought them back into that room that we just cleared because you have a little bit more room to play with. But we have no Sanguine, we got no Quaking, no ground effects. I'm just gonna fucking... 
I'm just gonna pull these mobs and fight them in the hallway where they're at. I got room. I don't have to play around. I can just kind of stay put where I'm fighting them and be fine. But if it was last week and there was Sanguine, I probably would have pulled them back into that other room. Now I'd say the major thing with these pulls is uh, you have uh, the kiss of something. Yeah, the kiss of death right there by the reformed maidens. I just kicked that. That's like the major spell you're going to want to interrupt from these guys. Reformed Maiden, Kiss of Death. That's what you're going to want to kick. Other than that, this hallway is like actually super simple. But something to keep in mind with this hallway. Um, these mobs don't give a lot of percentage. And that's something that's I've noticed with lower Karazam. And like the issue with pathing is the percentage that mobs give are really weird. They, they fluctuate in a way that doesn't necessarily make sense to me yet and i think this is kind of a common theme i've noticed when i've like seen some other videos of people tanking and some other people's commentary of lower kara is that the struggle bus that we're all kind of riding is uh the the percentage the like the percentage of uh the ads give are a little wonky this hallway does not give a lot a lot of percentage at all which is kind of why it goes back to like my earlier thought process of when I was trying to clear those old ads. It's like, oh, I better get these guys. I know I'm not going to have a lot of percentage in the back end. And I get that Dreadlord buff, and that ended up fucking us really bad. This Maiden fight, super cake. As a tank, it's super, super easy. Honestly, this fight, once you understand the, of the, like, the burn phase, it's, it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna tank him in the middle here. Kinda just point him away. General tank rules. She's gonna be targeting people with sacred ground. Their job is simple, just run to the edge of the room, drop it, that way it's not crowding up your whole room. It's gonna keep growing as the fight continues. So getting it to the edge is just gonna help keep things clean. go second sacred ground going out on the hunter keeping it out now I think she's gonna cast mass repentance soon so I, I bring her over to the sacred ground that way I can kind of keep up time on her and then just jump into it mass repentance goes out I'm standing in the sacred ground that allows me to get out of it right away now we got the burn phase. We want to do as much damage as her as we can so we can break through her shield and allow Holy Wrath to be interruptible. You can see we go back. Holy Wrath is not interruptible because she has that bubble. We're burning down that bubble. Once the bubble is burned, Holy Wrath is interruptible and then we immediately kick it. If you don't kick it, that's a wipe. Honestly, that was kind of too close for comfort. I would have liked to have seen us lust during that burn phase but for some reason we held on to the lust until after the burn phase which is a little strange but we made it now we're just cleaning up the fight's pretty much over at this point and yeah and so now i'm just stupid cussing now i'm just trying to get the last four percent but you know at this point timer has already failed it's just, it's just clean up at this point it's a little bit of a bummer. I would have loved to have timed this, but this is my first time tanking a plus 11. Um, first time first time tanking a plus 11, and it's the lower Kara, which right now is just, in the Mythic Plus community, it's just kind of a shit show. So now, I'm just getting my last couple percent, but that was the run. That was the, that was the plus 11 run. Um, I think the key takeaways is, I, I've said it earlier, but the key takeaways from this mythic, you know, things that went well is, I think that the boss fights went really well. I feel like the mechanics were followed and like when it came to like our actual understanding of the boss fights, we crushed it. Where we suffered is where everybody suffers in Lower Kara, which is like pathing and just dealing with just the BS and the tuning of this place. Uh, I think if we didn't have those three wipes, we would have timed. Maybe some, uh, got a nice trinket there. 
a little bit higher DPS we would have timed. But overall, you know, looking back at these, um, looking back at this dungeon, I don't think it was a terrible run. It just obviously wasn't a good run because we didn't time it. So um, I hope that, you know, you guys are able to at least take something out of my failures <laughs> and, and learn a little bit something out of it. I know I've learned something out of this and this, you know, I, especially going back and watching this again has allowed me to kind of like feel like, oh shit, that's why this happened and whatnot. So hopefully you guys were able to take something out of this. I definitely learned something from it. And, um, you know, going forward as I progress in my keys, hopefully I get better and, and we can kind of, you know, have more review on videos like that and kind of have future commentary on those higher keys. And who knows, maybe in a couple of videos we'll be doing a commentary and a, pl uh, and a you know, plus 18 timed run. That'd be dope. But anyways, hey, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have anything you'd like to add or you have, you know, any tips, suggestions or questions, just fucking leave a comment down below. But other than that, um, you know, thank you for watching and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video.